Hey guys, welcome to the Improvement Podcast, where the mission is to help young men develop their character, identity, and mindset in order to activate their potential and achieve their goals in life. So on today's episode, we have on another special guest. His name is Kevin Higgins, and he is the rebound coach. Thank you for coming to the show, Kevin. Yeah, thanks for having me, Kamani. Yeah, I'm excited for today. Me too, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, I like uh, improvement, you know, hey, helping our men out here. I'm focused on men, so... Um, let's uh, let's give these guys some some good advice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so uh, just to give the listeners a little bit more background information about you, could you tell them a little bit more about what you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, I'm the rebound coach, guys. Um, I identify a little bit long term as a life coach, but um, I found my niche in guys going through breakups. They seem to come to me for, for the advice, um, but also guys going through like career change or like, you know, they're kind of like. Kind of these like red pill moments, hate to use that free, that phrase, um, but going through sort of a, a red pill moment where they're looking to make some change. <laughs> okay, got you. So when you yeah, say yeah. red pill moment, for the people that might not be familiar with that, uh, could you elaborate? Yeah, you know, I mean, it happens a lot when we go through our dip, most difficult moments in life, right? Like you think of a breakup, you know, um, that's that's where you're kind of asking questions, right? Like, what did I do wrong? Like, what's going on? What, why, why did she leave me? Like, these are the guys, like, these are guys who are kind of like, Something's going on. And that's how I got into this business. Um, I had three straight breakups over the span of, you know, three to five years. <laughs> so I was like, I just had this, this moment where I'm like, it can't be, you know, can't just be her every time. And we got a lot of guys out there that are like, you know, they quickly like, oh, you know, fuckers. So can I swear on this podcast? Am I straight? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not, it's preferred. Like if we, if we don't, but hey, it's in there now. <laughs> hey, that's, like, that's a done deal. I, I guess that's yeah. how this episode is going to go now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think you muted yourself, actually. Uh, I don't hear anything coming through. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, straight, straight. Um, so picking up where I left off, you know, we got a lot of guys where we got kind of a, a masculinity issue, um, how I see it kind of globally, um, and just an energy issue. A lot of men are, are kind of um, taking the back seat, And then on the other side, you've got a lot of women who are, you know, badasses who are, who are starting to really – lean into their space. They want to make some money. And like, I, I respect it. And, um, so it's kind of leading us this weird area, but not to go too, too far off, but, um, yeah, it's, it seems to be where I find a lot of my clientele is, is, you know, masculine energy guys who are looking to embody purpose. Um, they don't know that's what they want. Um, I kind of have to let them know that you, you need purpose, but, um, that's, that's kind of where I find my, my niche. So it's interesting how that's something that's going on nowadays because, I feel like that wasn't nearly as prevalent maybe back when like our dads or like our grandpas were growing up. Right. It seems like everybody found some sort of purpose, even though maybe some of them may not have been mm -hmm. ideal or like the best. You know, uh, it seems as though every man or at least most men, you know, that were the average guy had some sort of purpose or direction they're moving in life. And now it doesn't really seem like that's much of the case anymore, huh? Yeah, Kamani, I think uh, we had a couple things, right? Uh, I mean, war, wartime, you know, used to be a pretty clear and obvious purpose for men, um, you know, and also just life was just really difficult, right? Like mm. <laughs> everything, everything was difficult, you know, like you just didn't have the conveniences that we have today. So it was real easy um, to get very soft, you know no what I mean? Eats. Just frankly, right? Yeah, no, no, yeah, no man, just, or any of that, right? Yeah, everything's handed to you on a platter. So um, I think I think that's a part. I think that's a big thing, man. It's just we did we don't have a lot of we have to kind of go out of our way to become men. You know, like we got to have things hit us hard. Like you got to be in a sport that like kicks your ass. You got to like like for me, like you know, I'll go in the woods for like you know five days with with you know with just a little bit of supplies and we'll make shit happen. And, and I think that like that brings out men, you know, a little bit so, stuff like that. Whether it's sports. You know, things like, and it's just, I don't know what it is, man. I mean, I think it's that, but it's also a lot of guys who maybe they have that toughness and that they, they feel like they're men, but then they just don't understand women in relationships. So now that's like, there's a two kind of separate things. You can be a tough, you, you can think you're a masculine dude, but if you don't know what women want and how that, how that works, like it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be tough, but that's, that's what I'm, my goal, you know, there's three kind of main pillars for me, help men discover their purpose you know, instill confidence, like in that mission, um, and then understand women in relationships. That's kind of like the three things that I kind of like focus on. Of course, I love talking about a bunch of stuff. Um, we should find out, but those kind of three things is um, what I'm focused on. 
Hey, great. And uh, one question I have for you is what made you decide to step into this space to start offering these services to guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like I said, I, I briefly touched on it a little bit. Like um, I, I had uh, kind of my, my red pill moment, like I called it. And I'm, by the way, just to clarify for my, my guys out there, I'm not a big like red pill, blue pill guy. I just, I use those terms loosely to like describe um, how someone like enters a space of like awakening. Right. Oh, so it's um, not like uh it's not like red pill dating. It's like, yeah, yeah, not, it's, not like, so it's, like it's like the matrix reference, like literally. Exactly. You know. Okay, exactly. I see. I mean, because when you first I, said red pill, that made me think like, okay, like what fresh and fit, uh, that that sort of stuff. And I well, was I'm like, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I clarified that. And, and not to say that any of that stuff is like bad. I just I've uh -huh. never been down that road. I just know red pill, like because people talk about it the way I'm talking about it too. It's just maybe it depends on where your perspective comes from, but um, you know, red pill meaning like this awakening experience of like, you know, where you just. You, you first got into self-help. That's pretty much like, you know, that's a very niche category. Like not many people are in this percentage of people listening to this podcast, like that are genuinely trying to improve. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people think that self-help, you know, you may forget because you're in it, you know, and you're, you're trying to help people. But like, maybe we forget, like there's a lot of people that don't like care about this stuff. Like they don't think it works. You know, they think it's all like, there's a self-help book on the shelf. Like I just walk right past that, you know, <laughs> like all my problems are impossible. So for me, how I got into it, um, like I said, I had, uh, you know, those, those three relationships straight and to get like specific, it was uh, just very like, you know, I was a fit dude, like I was talking about earlier, like fit dude, like, you know, I had, I had like kind of the basics. Like if you looked at me, you'd think like, oh, that guy probably does well, you know, <laughs> mm. like he does okay. Um, but I didn't understand. I didn't have a true masculinity. I, I, I guarded very insecure, you know, masculinity. Like, um, so, you know, I, kind of the stuff maybe you hear, like I was, I was chasing women away is maybe what you hear a lot in the dating space. Like I was just, I would get, I could, I could easily attract women, you know, get them in my life, go on dates with them, but I couldn't, I couldn't make it past, you know, like the three to six months, like, okay, now we're, we're in a relationship. Like, my insecurity would just, you know, my self-worth, like I didn't have purpose, you know? So a lot of those things were preventing me from having like sustainable long-term relationships. So to fast forward, um, you know, I got into, I, I got, I found a coach, you know, I started reading about stuff. Um, I started to figure out like, Oh, like, you know, women don't like this. Like they like to, they like a man with purpose, with drive, who's not like readily available. You know what I mean? Like they, they, they like guys who are busy and successful. And cause I, I could get that in the beginning, but I, I didn't have that, um, you know, long-term like a relationship. I kind of, I would always fold eventually to her mm -hmm. and what she wanted and stuff like that. It's, it's very easy for us guys, right? Pretty, she bats her eyes at you and she's a 10 out of 10 and you, you know, you easily, you're just like, yeah, whatever, you know, and it, it, it can happen real quick. So you got to stay in your ground. And that's uh, what I was not good at, um, for a while, but, um, yeah, I got, I basically got into some, some self-help stuff and I probably went, that was probably 23 years old, Kamani, um, when I kind of went through that experience, I'm, I'm 28 now. So five years of kind of like just taking in that information. And, and I was like, dude, I gotta show people this. Cause I was casually coaching some friends that mm -hmm. I was meeting at work. Some people were asking me like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> Cause I was, I was like dating the girls. I, I used to work at Uber. Um, and I was, I was dating the girls at the office, you know, I was making things happen. And, and some of the guys were like, what are you like, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> and I was like, I kind of just told them, like, I'd read some stuff, you know, and I, I kind of show you guys. And so I started casually doing it um, until I was like, you know, it took a while. I won't lie. Like maybe, maybe that was the same with you, Kamani. Like it takes a while to sort of like take that leap of faith, you know, like to start a podcast or to start something. And, um, you know, you got to put yourself out in the world very vulnerably. So I was like, you know, I, I just, my, I got on a call, my buddy, the pandemic happened. He was like, mm -hmm. Why don't, man, you just got to do it. You just got to, you just got to coach, man. I was, I was like, I, it, sometimes to my guys out there, sometimes it's one person in your life or one friend that you need to find these people in your life that will just be like, like, shut up. Like they're not going to hear your excuses anymore. And that's basically what happened. He was just like, dude, you've been talking about doing this for a minute. Um, it's time you go do it. And so that was kind of it. 2020 after that phone call started the Instagram, started like making content, started talking to guys, started coaching. So, and here I am now, I've been doing it for, um, yeah, I guess almost two full years, um, maybe on the dot. So, um, but yeah, man, it's been a blast. <laughs> hey, he a long story, but a good story. And, you know, he can, 
kind of get a really I gotta good give idea. you the full thing, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you, but at least you know it makes sense now how you got into it. Kind of a uh, similar story, I guess you could say, where you know, at least for me with the podcast, after doing so much of this process on my own, I guess you could say, like with the reading and coaches and that sort of thing, that was when I was like, hey, same thing you said, I should share this with some other people and you know, get some other people that know more than me to come on and be guests and talk about the stuff. And so, uh, improvement is born. And here we are today, you know, over a year later, uh, still going. So, yeah, I can definitely relate to the story. Yeah, man, it's, uh, you know, and for, you know, just for some inspiration for anyone listening to this podcast, maybe they're similar to us. Like, you know, you might have people out there like that's the hardest part is you're going to have doubters, you're going to have haters or like you're, you're already thinking mm-hmm. like if I started a podcast or if I started coaching, like the amount of hate, like, OK, like bet, But it's, it's not going to be as much as you think. Like it really won't. It'll be maybe like a few people in your in and and those people they don't ride with you to begin with. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like like <laughs> yeah. they they might hit you up on Instagram or comment because I, I post content that like at least at the beginning I posted content I, I still do but you know I got I got all the stuff out of the woodwork with like right away it, it happens right away that's actually a good thing to, to note too if you're thinking about starting something that the it's basically like peeling off a band aid like once you make that first post and you're like this is what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna talk about these topics like. The people who don't mess with you, they'll they'll they let you know probably, but there'll only be a few people. The most people they'll they'll, they'll support and they'll be around. Uh, but I think we all kind of know. I don't know if there's always that meme like uh, with like the, the like the straight guys doing podcasts and that sort of thing, like all the Twitter jokes. Uh, oh, I know. No, no, no. I was gonna, Is that what you're talking no, about? Gonna, or <laughs> no, because no, when you said the that. meme, I thought you were talking about like that type of stuff. Yeah. No, no, no. I was gonna talk about like you know, there's the support right the support and it's like there's always there's always memes like there's a guy sitting by himself like in the bleachers you know and then it's the it's the congratulations and it's like you know a million people in a everybody stadium, you know yeah. you know what i mean so it is kind of like that a little bit i'll be i'll be real but like once you get past that first beginning and i'm sure you've you've seen it come on you like you know podcasting's a little bit a little bit better because people like it's harder to get people to listen to your podcast than it is if i just post something and someone just looks at it right away and they're like mm. oh like you they can react to it like real quick you know whereas taking the time to listen to someone's podcast is a little bit different, but you guys get the point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess anybody out there that's thinking about starting a podcast, don't be afraid to don't let the, uh, the few people that might be in your circle that might discourage you tell you not to, don't let the, uh, the people on Twitter discourage you either. But, <laughs> For real. For real. Yeah. Like, this is, this is where you find out like who rides with you too. Like, cause if you, if you don't have any real, like I I've said this before too, like if you don't have any real firm opinions on the world, like, and I, you know, it may sound a little bit harsh, but I'm like, then you haven't really like stepped into like your person yet. Like, you know, like it's very easy for us to be in a crowd, mm-hmm. you know, especially we found out the past few years about the political climate and everything. It's very easy to be like kind of on that crowd energy and, and some of it's great. And, you know, so I'm not talking about generally all of it, but just saying like, you know, I think individuality, right? Like that's when you start, like you start talking about some stuff. There's so many pros, there's some cons too, but way more pros. I mean, obviously you start to do what you love. You start to figure out like who actually is going to ride with you. Like who, where are your best friends at? You kind of know, right? But like, where are the people that if you said something like that people thought was controversial, like in your homies, like, no, man, like, I mean, like, I know what your intentions were, you know, type of thing. And um, so I think that's another kind of added bonus to it, but it's, it's big, man. You got to, you got to start something. So a little bit of, a little bit of motivation for our guys today. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's something I'll add to that, actually, because yeah. you have me thinking about this now is um, it's really dangerous when you have too many people in society that are maybe in that middle ground, kind of like what you're saying, that don't have strong opinions on things. Because what people may not realize that implies is that it doesn't just mean you're an agreeable person or whatever. Like, so we might think they might think, oh, I'm a nice guy. What it really just means mm-hmm. is that you don't have your own like strong set values or morals. Mm-hmm. And the problem with that is that you, if you have to meet people in a society or in a group that are like that, they're just willing to go with whatever sounds like it's supposed to be the right thing. If you look back in history, that's literally led to some of the most terrible things that have happened throughout history. I mean, I I highly doubt that like, you know, these people that participated in the Holocaust, you know, I I highly doubt they're all like, yeah, you know, I want to, you know, exterminate people Uh, from the beginning. It's probably started with a lot of people that were pretty malleable, people that were pretty easy to influence and said, okay, I mean, I I guess, you know, I'll check it out. I'll, I'll look into this. Oh, everyone else is starting to kind of get into this. 
hey, I, I guess I'll do it too. And look at what happens. Kind, oh, of, yeah. kind of an intense example, but yeah. Oh, no, dude, you're, you're 100% right. That's why history is our greatest teacher, right? I right. mean, uh, we, we've seen, and I, I won't go down like a political uh, nightmare right now, but like we, we've seen it right now too on the low, you know, in other countries like Australia and Canada and some other stuff. Like we've seen a little bit here, but like, you know, we're the United States of America, you know, so <laughs> we're, we're pretty fortunate. We're pretty fortunate to be here. Um, but other countries, man, like, you know, it, it's it's crazy, you know, like you, you just, you're, you're, you, you hit a spot on, man. Like it, it's important that we... Like, it's okay. Like when, if you're young, listen to this, like, you know, take this with a grain of salt because, you know, you're still like, I, when I say young, I mean, like, I don't know, early twenties to like, you could be in high school or college and you're, you know, and good for you for listening to this podcast and you're further ahead than I was. But, um, you know, sometimes I, I see some young people get a little anxious that they're not on the level that like I'm at or whatever, when they're talking, I'm like, bro, you're, you know, you're like, you're, you're 20. Like I didn't mm-hmm. even get into this stuff till I was like 23 or whatever, you know, like, it's going to be okay. Like, like you'll form your opinions, you know, like, cause you need life experience. You need things to happen for you to be like, Oh, like, I don't agree with that. You know, sometimes you're just young and you just haven't had it yet. But um, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, you know, there's a, we don't have to go to, into it too much, but yeah, it's, it's group think sometimes, you know, we get stuck in this group think and there's a whole topic around that. It's like, you know, especially if you live in cities and you've got friends, you all went to university and you're hanging out and it's like, you, you know, you just start to like all have the same opinions that it's just like meld, molded together. Um, and there's there's a, a good thing about that because it's community and, and all these great things. But sometimes it's like, yo, do you really like vibe with it? Like, have you looked into this? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> is this where you stand? You know? <laughs> yeah, so, I feel you on that. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But yeah, just to uh, just to change gears a little bit, because yeah. <laughs> we definitely want to make sure that uh we tap into like your expertise and like, what Oh you yeah, know. let's do it. Let's yeah. Do first it. thing I wanted to ask you about just from what I saw on your IG page, something I saw specifically, you know, verbatim was discover your truths and purpose. And so I'm assuming that's something that you help your clients with, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 man. Uh, yeah, let's, let's dive into that. I think it's the number one. Uh, yeah. You, you can always steer me back on track. Come on. I could talk about a lot of stuff. So you got to, you got to right. keep me on track on this train. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Um, no. <laughs> truth, truth and purpose, man, is like I said earlier, it's, it's the number one thing I think about with men is like, it's the number one important thing. Like it just, in my opinion, like you can have, um, a lot of money. You can have a lot of other things. Like I, I actually saw on TikTok one day there was like this, mil- this, like he was multimillionaire guy. And he was like, you know, I just, I got all this money, but I just don't, like I got to pay women to come to my parties and stuff. And like, he's got to do all this stuff. And I'm like, damn, like, you know, we got opposite problems right now. <laughs> it's like, it's hey, like, like, opposite I'll take problems them. from you and your clients, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take <laughs> yeah, multi hope, Hopefully you your know? guys aren't doing any of that, right? Yeah, you might, yeah, you got, might have to I disown them. You. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, like, but, but to take a step back, like, I don't have any like problem with that. Like if he's trying to throw like big parties and like be on that lifestyle, like I get it, you know, but like, Obviously, I'm all about being able to attract women, you know, without having to pay, you know, like, yeah. like a woman that really wants to be with you for you and your personality and all that. Um, and I think that goes back um, to really figuring out your, your truths and, and your purpose in life. Because when you have that, like you have an immediate leverage on the whole dating pool on, on the women you're going to meet, um, you know, because you see in the dating world, there's there's lots of, of, of guys that are, you know, they're, they're trying to learn the dating game. And I think that's okay. That's how I got, I, I kind of learned the dating game first, but I knew intuitively that purpose is important and, you know, you shouldn't be too available and needing all this stuff. Um, so I was learning that kind of along the way and I didn't have true purpose yet. Um, but I was learning the dating game and, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you're almost faking it till you make it with that kind mm-hmm. of like mindset. Cause if you have true purpose and you, and your time is that valuable, then imagine like how much easier it would be to date because you wouldn't even be, I mean, you like a girl, you might get butterflies and that's great. I love that stuff. But like, you know, if you're working and you love your work, then you, you're not going to be like so needy to like, be like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's like, and I'm not trying to like paint this picture that you can't be um, authentic. Cause I, I want you to be authentic women and tell them, tell them about how you feel and stuff like that um, to an extent. Right. You know, keep, right. keep it real. But um, you know, it's just, there's, there's a lot of guys that, if, if they're, they're faking it until they have that true, like, this is what I'm doing. This is what I love. Um, I know it's hard. Like it, it's a worthy, worthy venture. And with my guys and, and coaching them, um, you know, I, I, it's all about asking good questions. You know, uh, I think we just get away from asking 
ourselves quality questions like not not everyone but i, I think you know we get into the job because you leave college it's like it's like damn i gotta get to the, I, I gotta go move here i gotta be around my friends and you know life happens fast you gotta get a job and all of a sudden you're working nine to five and it's like do i even like this <laughs> you know, so like that's what we talk about like the red pill moments the awakening moments that happen in life um i talk to guys who, who kind of have that like energy they're like man like I just feel like I've been doing this job, you know, for 10 years or whatever. And I don't know, I just make a good money. I like it, you know, and it's like, they've just been kind of trained to kind of just accept it for what it is. I mean, it's very easy to do that, right? We're very habitual human beings. Like we just get in rhythms and, you know, it's very easy not to like wonder anymore, lose that, like that young kid who was like, I want to be an astronaut or whatever. Like it sounds silly sometimes, but um, I think, little kids are great examples of like just having that like crazy creative energy of, of what we want. And so we, we should lose that, you know, um, there's really no reason not to go after it. You know, you can still mm-hmm. work, you know, do your podcast after and we, I can coach and, and figure it out, you know, until I make it big or whatever. Right. So that's kind of uh, my, my thoughts and opinions on, on truth and, and purpose, but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I got you. And so, I'll add some stuff to that. So for the, for the first thing, you talked about uh, purpose. And when you talked about people thinking it till they make it, I definitely agree with that. You know, you shouldn't do that. Uh, so one of the things that comes from having that purpose, like you mentioned, is that it puts you in a spot to where a lot of those things that, you know, you know they'll coach you to do whenever you're trying to fake it until you make it, they kind of come organically. Like one thing I'll say is that if you actually have a busy schedule and you actually have things to do, if you have a job and then like, you're uh, doing something else on the side of like, let's say life coaching or anything like that is that you probably don't have a whole lot of time to be super needy, you know, texting all the time. Right. And so you Mm -hmm. value your time. That's, you don't have to play the games. I guess like they would tell you where it's like, Oh, don't text back immediately or Oh, don't double Mm -hmm. text any of that sort of stuff. It kind of just would come naturally for you being occupied, like in your own stuff. And then two kind of talk, kind of touching on that curiosity thing too. One thing that uh, that having that curiosity kind of ensures is that, you know, it makes you more of an interesting person, too. And I would imagine that it sets you apart from maybe a lot of the other guys that they're coming across in their day to day life, because someone that has curiosity is exercising it, let's say, by doing different activities. Right. Or maybe coming up with different ideas, you know, ha- talking about different topics, actually having interesting questions and conversations that they can talk about and, and ask. And so that's something I think kind of comes with that, too. And that's a powerful combination, having that curiosity for the unknown and moving through life with that, I guess, with those eyes for growth and for learning and then also having that purpose that you're chasing. Mm, Yeah, man. I mean, that's that's number one. And, and, you know, the whole fake it till you make it thing. It's like I I empathize with it Mm because it's like, you know, it's like when you're a dude and and you're like you learn that stuff, it's like that's kind of what you rely on. And also like. There is some truth to fake it till you make it. Like, um, I don't know. There was a quote I heard the other day that was like, uh, I mean, obviously in acting, we know, like you literally act, you know, the part and you you sort of, you see them sort of like over the course of like filming a movie or a show, they sort of just are that person after a while. And obviously we know mm-hmm. some stories, some crazy actors and entertainers who like almost lose their mind because they, they do it. So there is some truth. Um, but like, like Kamani said, and like I'm saying, like you eventually do want to genuinely come from a place of like, I'm living my purpose and, and, you know, not have to act busy. Right. <laughs> maybe like, maybe you're a young kid and then maybe it, it's hard for you to even imagine being so busy. You know? but, um, yeah. It's, it's important to find things you really uh, are passionate about because um, the purpose needs to come first. And that may be a crazy thing for people to hear. Like purpose is first. Like, I mean, you know, maybe my perspective will change on that as I get older and maybe I'll get married or whatever. But for now, I, I just believe like your purpose as a man, like it's just that's like your masculine. You, you always got to be chasing that goal. Um, and, you know, so it needs to come into your life first. And um, it's not to say you wouldn't like take a call from your girl if, you, <laughs> like, if she needs to talk to you or anything like that. It's just saying like if she would have if she would have said I'm going to take away your purpose and it's got to be me. Right. That's what I'm talking about. Like mm-hmm. you'd obviously want to be in a position where it's you and your purpose because that like that what your purpose it's amazing like when you have it um and and to stop using the word purpose whether it's your coaching business or a podcast or an instagram page you just like to post your social media creator like all these different things amazing things you could be doing with your time that you love 
that thing almost pre it preoccupies your girlfriend. It, it is your girlfriend, which is fun. It's so weird to say that and think that. Um, but I've actually noticed that like when I left a relationship like last year, um, I wasn't as nearly as her or like, I mean, obviously I know what I know now and I know how to like heal from a relationship, but um, I wasn't nearly as like preoccupied with with of course i went through the grieving process i'm not some crazy like <laughs> like i shed some tears mm -hmm. like i love my girl all this stuff but um like i had i had a lot of shit to do i had a business you know it's like i'm coaching like i'm, I'm doing it you know so it's like that takes the place you know and it's amazing when you have that if you don't it's like maybe if you hate your job and you go through a breakup it's like oh my gosh it's like it's like damn it can't get any worse you got to go to the job you don't like and your girl's not with you anymore you know so that's a tough mm -hmm. place to come from and so i empathize with anyone that is maybe going through that or, or, or has been through that recently like that is it's a tough place to come from for sure yeah so something that's uh that's interesting that I, I like to add to this and i want the guys to kind of consider is that it's really necessary to have a purpose to live a healthy life because the thing is whatever it is that you're putting most of your time into, you know, whatever it is that your values are aligning with, which, you know, should be your purpose. That's how you're going to, uh, that's really how you determine your like self-worth really at the end of the day. And so the thing is, let's say if you don't have a life that's in a direction moving towards, let's say a purpose. Okay. That leaves you with two things really, or yeah, I guess just really two things, either like your job probably, or your girl that you're looking for that, uh, I guess that sense of self-worth or that you're like basing your identity around. Right. And so if it's a job and especially if it's something that you don't like, that's not great. And that job can always be taken away from you at the end of the day, you might lose that job. You might have to move somewhere else and get a different one. And then same thing with your girl. If you're, pay if you're like placing so much of like, you know, your time and effort and worth into, you know, getting her approval and that sort of thing, chasing her, doing what's important to her. Well, for one, I guess, you know, a dating culture probably said that's unattractive. But then the second thing is that it leads to like an unhealthy dependence. And so it's like, if you're going to have something to depend on, you want it to be something that you determine, I'll say, which it should be that purpose. And with mm -hmm. that, those values that you have, that way that you, that measuring stick, I guess you could say your, your truths, they should align with that. So that way that can be what it is that you have is like the, the arrowhead of, of your life, you know, the, mm -hmm. the point of it. Mm, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about here. I mean, I, I in my program, um, the superior man program, we can talk about it maybe a little bit later, but mm -hmm. um, superior man program, and, and, you know, the kind of one of the first things we go through, or at least in, in some point across the process, we're um, asking these questions, right. And, and some of those questions are, you know, um, when you were a kid, like, what did you love to do? you know, and you go through this kind of process, you know, and, and like, you have to care about it, you know? So just to add to what you're talking about, like, you know, cause people are maybe listening and cause I know from experience, like coaching my clients, like purpose can be a sensitive top, a topic and a little bit triggering. Cause it's like a lot of, a lot of the guys, at least that are around this stuff, they know they need to have it, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we keep talking about it and they're like, how do I, how do I get I it? Find like, it what, right? is, what is mine? And like, you know, <clears throat> I want to put it like this, because this will make people feel a little bit better. Your purpose, um, as much as we talk about it generally, like we keep saying the word purpose, like it doesn't have to be like your business is not necessarily the purpose, it's not necessarily the, pur the purpose. It serves, it, it's like, it's the entity in which you do your purpose through, you know? So mm -hmm. like Kamani likes like speaking and like meeting people, like that's part of his purpose, right? Like, like talking, meeting new people, like talking about topics like this and like doing cool stuff, you know, creating stuff, you know, like that's the actual purposeful activity. So like, if you want to think about it that way, it's way more helpful, like purposeful activities. Cause you actually, you might be participating in your purpose a little bit more than you think right now. Maybe you, you play soccer or you, you know, you play a sport and like, that's purposeful to you, you know, like, Really, it's just the feelings you get from doing it, you know, like, how does it make you feel when you're doing these activities? Just think like, and then like, be very intentional about that. Like, if you feel like, you know, like I'm all about um, being intentional and conscious, I'm conscious and intentional um, was my theme for 2021 for my clients. Still the theme for 2022. I think it's, it's always going to be the theme, running theme, <laughs> being conscious and intentional. So what I mean by that is like. Maybe you have to listen to this podcast. You're like, I want to write this stuff down. Like, I want to, you know, I want to write down what he just said about how I feel about these activities. I'm going to sit down and take notes. Like, you know, I, oh man, I feel really good playing soccer. Like that's, that's something I write down. So why do we do that? Like, 
not just to write it down, but to like, if you ever get down in the dumps, because sometimes we get off track, right? Like we talked about earlier, sometimes we're habitual. We'll just get off track a little bit. We're like, man, like, I'm feeling a little bit crappy lately. It's like, well, I haven't been playing soccer, you know, like I haven't been like sweating, you know, I haven't been working out. Like I love doing that stuff. Like I haven't had a podcast scheduled in two weeks. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like we need these things. So like, it's not as hard as you think, you know, you just got to ask yourself the right questions. And if I didn't provide enough clarity, you can always send me a message about like purpose stuff. Um, I'm a big, uh, obviously I'm in it. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. To, about, yeah. All right. All right. And so, yeah, to go on to uh, another topic that I noticed is something that you focus on and like what you tell your clients, you talk about building confidence. And so, of course, that's valuable even outside of dating, you know, in pursuing your purpose. I feel like we really need to stop saying that word. We need to find something else to uh, uh, to describe it. Uh, well, I just broke it down. So we should be good. We should be good. Like, yeah, we should we, we, should, we should be fine now. But yeah. So let's talk about uh, building confidence. I know that's something that a lot of guys probably struggle with, and it's definitely leading to them maybe not getting the results mm -hmm. they like, uh, whether it's mm -hmm. at work or with women. So uh, what are some uh, mm -hmm. what are some struggles you think guys have that lead to that? And then what would you say are some tips you could give to help build confidence? Yeah, Monty, you just made me realize that, like, I mean, I've been I've been kind of um, being intentional and, and kind of like framing words I've been using lately because I realize some of these words are just so general and kind of harmful for people. Right. Like, mm -hmm. like, I mean, you have to use them because they're like, you know, I'm not going to, every time I have to say the word confidence, I'm not going to explain the definition like, of how to get it. Right. It's just like, I right. got to use these words, but I do understand how it can be. Um, it can be tough to understand what you mean. Right. It's like, how do I just have confidence? You know? So yeah, I, I talked about earlier, how I have these kind of these three pillars, like you, like we've kind of gone through purpose, instilling confidence, understanding women and relationships. Um, but you notice that women relationships are the last because I like to have the first two first. I mean, of course, you're not going to stop dating if you, you're not going to break up with your girlfriend just to like figure that out. But <laughs> along, along the way, you figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Um, so major you know, dedication, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got to I got to go with Kev the coach. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, with confidence. Um, well, first of all, purpose will give you a ton of that. Right. Because um, obviously just feeling like you're doing your life's purpose, like what else is going to you know, get you going more than that, you know, get a buzz going, feeling good about what you're doing. So um, funny thing about confidence is it's, it, it is stuff you do, right? Like confidence definitely is like it exists. You can have it. Um, and I also believe just like happiness, in my, my opinion, and I think it's just true, but my opinion, um, you can have, just have happiness and have a general understanding of like, like, why life's beautiful and just and keep things very simple. So it's easy to be happy when you keep things real simple and you're grateful for simple things. Right. Um, so that's kind of like a part of the tip into that. Um, but in terms of confidence, like you, you, you can just like, just like have, you could just like have it. You could just start to like believe in yourself, you know, slowly by doing these things. Right. So like if we're building out your weekly schedule, right. Mm -hmm. um, being intentional about the purposeful activities you do every week, if you set them up, and you you make an honest commitment to yourself that like these are the things that make me feel good. And I and I will say some of those things, you actually might be like, oh man, but that stuff makes me nervous or that stuff's scary. Like maybe it's starting a podcast and you're nervous to start talking, but at the same time, it's like you love when you're in it. So you have to remember, you have to stay attached to the feelings you got from the thing. So like when I first started coaching, like I was nervous for sure, but like I also knew. Like, this is what I want this make once I'm in the call, I'm like live, I'm doing good. Right. Mm -hmm. And eventually the nerves, they just, maybe they never like go away completely. Maybe they'll come back or whatever. Right. But I'm in it now, you know, I'm, I'm loving it and I'm doing it. Um, so this is how you like, you create confidence for sure. Um, but the reason I said, you got to have it, you just like have it too. It's kind of like those two ways, right? Like, so I played soccer my whole life to give an example. Um, but I don't like, I think people do this. They, they have this like weird thing that it's like, well, I haven't played in a while. And, uh, you know, I'm probably going to be really bad. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. why would you say that? You know, it's like, like my whole thing is like, I mean, I like to believe I'm the best every time I step on the field. Like it doesn't have to be like, I don't have to touch the ball every week. You know, like I didn't lose that skill. It didn't go anywhere. You know, it's like in sports, we all kind of know, like when you have it, you know, you get that confidence. It's just like, it just translates. Um, so yeah, I guess I, I kind of, I talk about a lot of things there, but, um, the main takeaway would be just, you know, obviously doing the things that you need to do, <laughs> you know, like, like 
I think working out is one of the more general things you can talk about with men, mm -hmm. right? That like gives you confidence. So like you got to hit the gym. If like, that's the thing that like you hit the gym on Friday, you know, right before you go out or whatever you like to do, you know, whatever you like, if you go out, you go to the bars or you have a date, like show up to that date so that you have a date at 7 p.m. You worked hard, right? Like you stretched, you, you know, maybe, maybe like you've got some other little extracurriculars you did. You worked out. Like now you, you're showering, you feel good, you look good. Like that's confidence. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, but people like to look at confidence as like the finished product. They're like, they're looking at Brad Pitt and they're like, damn, like, how did he get that? It's like years of work. <laughs> it's like, right. Brad Pitt was the product of, I mean, he was, he was probably just as confident as 16, but you know, you know the deal. All right, here, I'll, I'll say this, because this is what I picked from, uh, from what you said. It sounds mm -hmm. like there are really two main components to confidence, right? So one... Uh, where you talked about like having your routine and all that, that makes me think uh, developing small wins, building up small wins, compounding them. Uh, you know, let's say like, just to use another sports analogy, because I'm a sports fan, let's say that you want to be a better shooter. And so to develop your confidence, your proficiency in shooting, you're going to keep on shooting balls, right? And so with like stacking up those consistent wins, it also builds that competency, I guess you could say, and your awareness of that competency and then the other portion of it that we could add to it, we talk about just being confident. I think, you know, maybe somebody listening to it that hasn't like looked into this stuff, they might be confused on that. Like, how do you just be confident? But uh, the way that it strikes me is being willing to just kind of put yourself in that spot, you know, to even potentially be embarrassed or fail in the first place. And so uh, with that, without that, you don't really have that opportunity to even showcase the confidence, you mm -hmm. can say. I mean, Steph Curry, he knows that he could potentially miss a shot, but we still see that guy pulling up at half court, right? Like it doesn't even matter. He still had to put himself in that position and just go and do it uh, to mm -hmm. even be able to get the final result. So that's really the two things that I kind of grabbed from it that I think that they should take. Mm -hmm. Building up those small wins so you can have a good idea what your competence is and like, what you can do. And, uh, you know, putting you in a good mindset to think, hey, if this is all working, maybe the next one can work. And then betting on yourself and putting yourself in that spot to uh, actually give yourself the opportunity to make it happen for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So that, that's yeah, exactly. That, that's what I do with my clients. You know, I, I, I kind of I give them the recipe to like understand, like it's right in front of you. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like it's not necessarily a secret as much as it is the action that you just have to take to get it. Like some people just want confidence, but they're not willing to put in any work. And it's like, dude, that's not how this works. Like you only get confident. Like the dude you see on the screen in your favorite movie, like, like he's a baller. That's, that's facts. But <laughs> he, he been grinding for that role. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he, he been grinding for that role. Like he, it's not, he didn't just get handed that, you know? And mm -hmm. um, so you kind of have to, that's kind of a pill you got to swallow. I think most of your guys, you know, I think most guys, like they understand, like they got to put in work to get their confidence. Um, but there are, there's a small percentage. Um, another thing I want to talk about though, is, is it's almost like a mental toughness thing. Um, so my coaching is like, you know, I get people like, you know, some activities they can do. Like you said, tracking small wins is huge for me. I have all my clients, they, they track their wins, you know, get into the, the, the flow of understanding like the good stuff you're doing, um, and recognize that because like, if you don't like, it's very easy, like to just feel like crap. Another thing too, is, uh, think about like, if you're participating in a bunch of things, so you're, you're a newcomer and a lot of the things you're doing, then your confidence is going to take a hit, mm -hmm. you know? So you want to find a good balance of like, I don't know, whether it's 70% things you are good at and you, you're already kind of doing and you feel good at, and then 30% like, or, you know, f figure out your percentage that works for you. Um, you know, 30% of things that you're like, you're, you're trying that's new. And even then dude, like, like, you got to be willing. There's a, there's a quote, I, you know, I haven't even figured out whose quote is it. It's funny. I looked it up the other day and I was like, no one's got this quote. Um, but you got to be willing to be a fool before you can be the master. Mm -hmm. And that quote like hits hard when you think about it. Cause it's like, who gave us such a big ego that we thought we were just going to be the best after one day, you know, it's, it's very easy to kind of get trapped in that kind of thinking, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I see people all the time. It's like, I think I'm very fortunate that I've tried so many different things in my life. So I don't know. I just, I think through meditation, we haven't talked about that yet, but mindfulness and things like that, but also just trying a bunch of new things and being and realizing like, I'm not going to be the best of this overnight, you know, like, but 
it's fun and like it makes me feel good and like you just got to have a perspective you know it's like too many people are so hard on themselves like i i a kid was playing soccer with his i played soccer in college so i play at a pretty high level and he, he hasn't played much and he was like getting down on himself so quickly and i was like man like so i mentioned mental toughness i'm like come on man it's like, you're not gonna come out here and beat us we've been playing for like eight years you know it's like you're not realistic gonna, expectations years, too yeah exactly yeah so that's that's a couple things to add on in there yeah and so one question before I add something. Do you yeah. do you have your clients do cold approaches? Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not like, you know, like I said, you know, um, we, we, we were vibing before we started. Like, you know, I don't necessarily focus on, on dating a whole lot. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, definitely guys are dating for sure. And they, they do want my advice. So not to say there's not, but I'm, I'm very much into purpose and like that kind of stuff. But um, I mean, yeah, if, if a guy is if he's scared of rejection, I had a client. Um, last year who was like i noticed he's just i'm like dude you just got like a rejection thing like you just go out and i was like you got to go out and just ask people i don't know if you've seen that youtube video uh from that ted talk where um the guy just goes up to like 100 people and asks for like 50 bucks no <laughs> so, like, i've never seen just, that no just basically just to get rejected and it's actually a re i mean if it works for you great i don't know maybe if you have to go through that kind of trouble to, to get what you want <laughs> but uh but it, it teaches you right because i was in sales mm -hmm. so like and I, i'm still oh, so you're sales. definitely used to it getting rejected yeah, yeah yeah i've been i've been in sales and, and so uh, yeah it's like dude I've, I've taken so many no's you, you just you realize after a while and more more specific to women and, and sales like Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, I'll, I'll relate. I'll relate the two real quick. Um, you've got how many percentage of you may not know sales, but I'll just tell you. you may percentage of deals that that goes through, it's like three to five percent or something like that. You know, it's like for a cold outreach. Um, you know, you can reach out to someone, and there's like, so say it's via email. Like your best chance is maybe like twenty percent that they 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 respond, or sorry that they open it. Um, mm -hmm. and then it's even lower for that. They're going to respond. So it's like, you think about it, it's the same with women, dude. Like you can't have, it's not going to be, you know, a hundred percent from the field. You know? You'll know, be right. lucky if you're, you know, if, if you yeah, for our sports guys, put it in the sports perspective, that helps you. You think like, man, if I was shooting, you know, I mean, man, 45% would still be pretty good in my opinion. You know, I think with women, if you're shooting like, and I, I and I'm telling you for real, like, you, some people like are like even my clients are like you must you must have it figured out like there's you don't get rejected I'm like no dude like there's energies at play like mm -hmm. some women are just not compatible for you and they're gonna say no like there'll be some women that are into me and I'm like I'm not into you it's like it's like there's just so much going into it so when you kind of realize that that it's actually just finding someone that likes you and not so much just going through the pain of like like I see those dudes on uh, those dating coaches that are like why you got to do those cold approaches. <laughs> I'm like, I'm kind of like, I mean, I guess in some circumstances, right? Like if you, if you think like she's smiling at you and stuff, yeah, go, go talk to her. Like she's interested in you go do that. But like some dudes are like kind of over the top with it. Like you got to talk to 15 girls a day. <laughs> it's, like, it's like that to me, that's like, we're kind of going on our way to, to meet women now. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, I think you should be meeting women like, like organically, like through the stuff yeah, that you yeah. do. Exactly. Like, you know, and um, so that's kind of uh, the whole thing on cold approach there. <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. I think it is better to meet them organically through just like living an interesting life, doing that sort of thing. But I do cold approaches, too. And I think there's a lot of benefit to it. And it oh, kind of yeah. goes back to what you're saying about like really having realistic expectations. And so you talked about like the kid playing soccer with you and, you know, thinking that he was going to be great at it, you know, just showing up. So many people have unrealistic expectations about dating and compatibility and really just don't even put themselves around women enough to really even know like what the different dynamics are at play. So I think that's one thing. And then two, when they get rejected, you know, maybe doing like their first cold approach they they might have ever done in their life or something like that. It's like, well, what the hell did you think was going to happen? Yeah, it's like same thing with the soccer. Yeah. You've never you don't even you don't talk to strangers you know in, in general and now you're trying to like talk to like a stranger and build attraction like of course you're gorgeous <laughs> yeah of course you're probably gonna fail and so the thing is you know it just made me kind of think about that like because you know there's there's sometimes i go do it and like i might have somebody come with me to go to go try it out just to like get used to talking to people and like getting used to that rejection so i guess when you do mm -hmm. have those moments where let's say like you're in your uh like you're in like a class that you're taking 
or whatever else, you know, you have the balls to say, okay, you know, I've been rejected by all these other girls, but this girl's actually looking at me and I, I want to talk to her. It's no issue to go and talk to that girl at, at this point, because you've already been shooting in the gym, you know, with tougher targets, you could say. Yeah, man. A hundred percent. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah, I think it does just come down to some people just haven't uh, experienced enough rejection. So for whatever mm-hmm. it is going to be for you, just do something about it. You know, like if, if you like, I'm all, I always say to my clients like you got to negotiate with yourself. Um, so it's just a term I use for like, you know, I don't know if you've, I don't know if you're a, a fan of Jordan Peterson's work, uh, but yeah. 12, 12 rules of life. Yeah. So it's kind of like, he, he kind of, I don't know if he uses that exact phrasing, but he kind of talks about like how we have this inner critic and we got to talk to ourselves, you know, like we're, you know, a little kid, you know, we got to be nice to ourselves and like kind of negotiate, like, what am I willing to do to get over this, you know, fear of rejection? Like just, just pick this, even the smallest thing, just get started. Um, so maybe you weren't in a sports group growing up or whatever, or you're in high school right now, or you're in college or you're, you're out of college, you got a job, like find something that's going to maybe give you a little bit of taste of like an atmosphere that has some rejection involved. Like sports is out. There's a lot of rejection in sports. Like you, you know, oh, yeah. you're playing basketball, someone swats your shot. Like, how do you react? You know, like, are you going to get all pissed and, and you're going to have a terrible game for the rest of the time? You know, it's like, you got to be quick to just move on. That's what sports teach you. And so find an activity for you that kind of like you like, that'll maybe teach you those kind of lessons. Cause, um, I think, I mean, there's always those like cliche phrases, like you miss all the chances you don't take, but it's true. Like you really like, if you don't just try stuff, you know, and uh, get out of your comfort zone, um, you'll be doomed to live in your comfort zone. So don't, don't do that. (laughs) Gotcha. Gotcha. And so now that we're kind of coming to the end of the interview, one question that I'd like to ask you is, uh, what would you say is the uh, best piece of advice that somebody ever gave you. And it doesn't have to be related to any of the topics we talked about today. If it is related, cool. If not, just like what in general would you say is the best piece of advice you ever received? Oh man, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, I mentioned a couple in there and I, you know, for me, I think uh, I kind of like rotate, like a quote will like hit me. I used to not be that type of person, but like now for whatever reason, like if a quote hits me and I'm like, dang, like that, I resonate with that right now. Um, the one I just mentioned earlier, um, you have to be willing to be a fool in order to be a master. Um, that one hit me hard recently. Um, and like, you would think I'm already trying a lot of new stuff, but like, you can, it's like, you know, it's it's easy for us to get very complacent, right? We got that alligator mm-hmm. brain or whatever that thing is. Yeah, the um, lizard brain, yeah. <laughs> the lizard brain, not the alligator brain. I was, I knew I was like- I mean, kind of same thing, right? <laughs> yeah, they're both reptiles, right? I don't know. Um, but no, I mean, it's, it's important. I mean, because- we, we can vary even the guys that were trying a bunch of new stuff they'll talk about you know if you, whoever you follow online like a lot of them will even tell you like yeah i started to get complacent and you would be like dang that dude who's got you know a billion dollars and he's all these businesses and you know all that stuff. yeah everyone gets like it's we tend to just like no, i'm complacent it's like no we got to keep kind of pushing the envelope and you'll feel better that way even just without me giving that advice but um, I think that's another one, but to give two, since I already mentioned that one, um, I think uh, there's another one that was on my mind too. Um, I always mess up this quote. Um, uh, not knowing is most intimate. So, um, kind of the, 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 the transparency behind that quote is that like, um, sometimes you just gotta like do stuff in life. And obviously if you're a religious person, which I've, I've, I've come back to faith and God and spirituality, but not, not to impose it on anyone, but I do think having those in your life, um, this quote will make a little bit more sense, but it's, it's really just the idea that, um, you don't have to have everything figured out, <laughs> you know, like, like I, I was just, I already mentioned the Kanye documentary already. I, I just, no, I don't this. think I, you did. <laughs> yeah, I, I I was really inspired by it. and uh you know for, for our guys go watch that documentary um you know watch documentaries like that to to see what it's really like to be at the bottom and to be grinding and all the rejection that Kanye goes through he's like he's showing up with his CDs he's like he's like play my music he's like they won't take him seriously as a rapper like this is what it's really like you know a lot of these documentaries will show what it's like when they're already in it like and after the jets yeah, and the, yeah, yeah it so. shows him like in the record studios. And them exactly. playing it and like the people just kind of sitting there ignoring it. Yeah, I've, I've watched part of it, but uh, exactly. yeah, that is one thing I like about it. Yeah, yeah, man. And uh, and even just, you know, obviously, um, so keep searching until you have that energy like Kanye. Like 
keep searching. I mean, you know, obviously that's a special human being, right? But but you're even on a smaller level, like keep searching until you find your thing that you're like, you know, you had that confidence, like this is what I got to do. And then just go after it kind of with just a blissful, like it's in the world's hands, right? If you don't want to say God, if you, if you want to say the universe, it's in the universe's hands, like I'm just going to go after it and, you know, we'll see what happens and, and don't, don't sweat the small stuff along the way. Like that's, that's resonated for me. Just, you know, like you can start a business and it doesn't have to be the best business. But just like go with it, just give your best. And like, you know, not knowing is most intimate. Like it's a fun experience that way. When you have that perspective, it actually makes it more fun. Cause mm-hmm. you're like, dang, I didn't know I would have, I would have all these guests on this year. Like it was my best year podcast and whatever. Like you were just having fun with it. You know, that makes it so much better than being like, like all stressed out, <laughs> you know, like makes it way more enjoyable. Yeah, I see what you're saying, and it's all good advice. But um, yeah, it pretty much wraps it up. And so mm-hmm. I really appreciate you coming on to the show. And uh, for anyone that wants to find you, I'll make sure to put all your information down in the description with your link tree. Yeah, hell yeah. Thanks, Kamani. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, all right, man. Take care. You too.